Hey guys, hope you're going well. I'm going to be doing the coffee foam tag today. Mariana from the Impression Blend tagged me to do this one and I hadn't seen it. I hadn't known this tag was floating around before seeing her video, but I am totally on the same boat as her. If there is a tag involving both coffee and movies, I am so all about that life. As I was running through the questions for this tag, I immediately just wanted to answer everything in 90s and early 2000s nostalgia movies for me because I just, when I do these tags and I'm asked to think of a certain situation or a certain a certain theme, I automatically just go back to those, you know, most influential movies for me. But to mix it up a little bit and to keep it current and keep us in the present, I thought we'd focus on movies specifically from this year, from 2015. Okay, so let's jump in and of course I've got my liquid life going on in here with, this is my favorite mug at the moment and <laughs> it's just got a very, um, you know, deep and thought provoking uh, mantra that really helps me to kickstart my day. Wake up. Black Coffee, a film that's hard to get into but has loads of hardcore fans. I, okay, this is a hard one because this movie's only just come out recently, so I don't know if it has hardcore fans, but it definitely has a very solid fan base. The Martian from Ridley Scott, which just came out earlier this month, starring Matt Damon, and it's a very, you know, nice, neat space rescue mission, but I just think it wasn't executed as effectively as it could have been. And for my review, I actually did a standalone review on this and I say quite neutral on the side of positive about how I felt about this movie, but the more I think about it, like the more weeks that passed since I saw it, I think that it just was a little bit watery and just it wasn't really there for some reason. Peppermint Mocha, a film that gets more popular during the holiday season. This was a little bit more tricky to adapt to my 2015 theme, but so instead of sort of saying Christmassy themed movies, which I think this question is trying to get you to talk about, I'm going to talk about some movies that make me think of Christmas this year. And most notably, it would have to be the new Star Wars movie, Force Awakens. That is coming out December 17th, which reminds me I actually need to go and book my tickets. <laughs> I'm really going to try and go and see the midnight screening for that. But yeah, that makes me think of Christmas. We've got some other Christmas releases as well, including Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight, which I'm very much looking forward to, and Leonardo DiCaprio starring in The Revenant, directed by Alejandro, Alejandro Inarritu, who did Birdman. And the trailer for that looks very gritty and dark, but I'm looking forward to that one as well. So they are a couple of titles that make me think of Christmas. Hot chocolate, your favorite children's film. Okay, children's film for this year, I feel like it would have to be Pixar's Inside Out. Although I know that generally that was the, mo the more strong film in terms of audience reception and box office numbers. That movie smashed at the box office. But personally, if I had to pick one children's film that I loved from this year, unashamedly, that would be Cinderella. I just really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really true to the original Disney um, cartoon from the 50s. And it had a slightly dark twist and Kate Blanchett was amazing as the dark and evil stepmother. And yeah, I just, I really liked it. Double Shot of Espresso, a film that keeps you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. Easily from this year would be Mad Max Fury Road. I think that was an awesome movie. <laughs> I know that after the fact a lot of people dissected the story and the plot and didn't think that there was much story journey there if you know what I mean but I just loved it as I was watching it unfold it was really nothing like what I expected it to be and I loved it. I thought it was feminist, kick-ass and Charlize Theron was awesome. Starbucks, a film you see everywhere. Uh, at the moment, I know what's being pushed really hard is 
The Walk starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt and I have seen the trailer, there have been like print campaigns everywhere and outdoor billboards, whatever, and people are pushing it really hard but I don't know if I really, I don't know, it just didn't really interest me at all. I saw the trailer and I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> It really just really didn't interest me. There's a documentary called The Walk about the actual tightrope walker who did that stunt and that is an amazing documentary. Do I want to see it remade into a dramatic sort of thriller? Mm, no. Hipster Coffee Shop, give an indie film a shout out. Okay, if there is any film from this year which deserves a slow clap of appreciation, that would be the horror movie It Follows. Such a cool little indie psychological horror movie with this really funky electronic music score and just so cool. I think they, they only made the film for like $2 million and it cleaned up off its own merit at the box office. It took back like 18 or 19 million, which is just awesome and every indie filmmaker's you know dream to make something low budget and small and just have it like catapult onto the main stage because it's genuinely really awesome. Oops, I accidentally got decaf, a film you expected more from. <laughs> That's such a random, such a, such a random statement. <laughs> okay, a film I expected more from just recently would probably have been Guillermo del Toro's Crimson Peak. That is a gothic horror film and I was really looking forward to it this year. I had heard a lot about it and the trailer looked awesome, it looked super cool and I do love gothic period films anyway. So that plus horror, I was totally into it. The setting and location was just breathtaking. The acting was great. Mia Wasikowska was great in the lead and I always love Jessica Chastain and Tom Hiddleston. But at the end of the day, yeah, it just kind of wasn't, wasn't everything that I wanted it to be. The perfect blend, a film that was bittersweet but still left you satisfied. This would have to be the crime thriller Sicario. Bittersweet is an understatement. It's pretty much just bitter, bitter. It's really dark, it's really grisly and de depressing, I guess, in a way that some things just never change and how dark the world can be. <laughs> but Emily Blunt in the lead is awesome and the movie is just so well crafted. It is just really well done. Awesome, awesome movie. Coffee with my sugar, a film that you might love a little too much. Okay, <laughs> this one's kind of an embarrassing one. Well, maybe not. I think it is. It's not one that I've ever talked about on my channel before because it's sort of like it's one of those guilty pleasure movies that I really, really liked it, but I'm not going to go out and start running around and telling people how great this movie is and how much they should see it. And that would probably be San Andreas. <laughs> I really like disaster movies when they're done well and they're just kind of, you know, they're the kind of movie just switch off, just see a whole bunch of shit get blown up and it's kind of cool and Gotta love The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. He's just awesome. He just delivers those one-liners like nobody else. <laughs> I don't know, is that embarrassing? I can't even tell, but yeah, I kind of liked it. Okay, moving on. Friends Don't Let Friends Drink Starbucks, a film you try to force others to avoid. Easy, so easy from this year. The biggest, most expensive catastrophe is without a doubt Jupiter Ascending. That was super, just convoluted and complicated for no reason and yeah terrible terrible movie i have no shame in saying that i really did not like that movie yay that's it we're done thank you so much again to mariana for tagging me to do this one it was a bit of fun why don't you guys let me know what your biggest coffee with my sugar film would be as in what was your biggest guilty pleasure movie from this year i'd like to know again mine was san andreas don't judge you can leave me comments in the comment section down below and also you can subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my other movie and TV reviews and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!